once an irreversible death sentence, now entirely survivable. HIV is a virus around 35 million people in the world live with today. How to Survive a Plague is an Oscar-nominated documentary about the AIDS activism movement back in the 1980s, which helped, in part, to develop drugs to help people infected by HIV lead or live normal lives. I met the director and one of the campaigners featured in the film. The municipal hospitals are totally falling apart. More than half the people who get diagnosed with AIDS today get diagnosed in the emergency rooms of our city. You're going to find yourself waiting four days in an emergency room before you get a bed. Greenwich Village, New York, in the mid-1980s. The AIDS epidemic had reached crisis point. On the streets of Manhattan, the ACT UP movement called on authorities to take action against the virus. At the center of the campaign was Peter Staley, himself HIV positive. I was diagnosed with AIDS-related complex while I was working as a bond trader on Wall Street. I had night sweats. I began to get dry, patchy, scaly, itchy skin on my face, and I would get sick constantly. Now, Peter is one of the voices in the documentary How to Survive a Plague, which charts the dramatic story of the ACT UP movement. There was a, a national panic about AIDS. Uh, because of the Rock Hudson death, it was on every cover of every magazine, and parents were pulling their kids out of schools when they heard that one child might be HIV positive in the school, and very, very scary time. Plague! We are in the middle of a plague. 40 million infected people is a plague. I remember in the UK in around 1986, one of the main police commanders here famously said, and I paraphrase him, gay men should swill in their own cesspit of debauchery. Were you hearing similar sort of supportive lines? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, on the bond trading desk uh, where I worked, uh, I had to remain in the closet uh, but uh, a year after my diagnosis, year and a half after, ACT UP had its very first demonstration on Wall Street. And we, got, we all got handed flyers on our way into work uh, from the ACT UPers about what the demonstration was going to be. And there was a discussion on the trading floor, uh, and my mentor, the, lead, uh, the head trader on the trading floor, uh, he just shut down the discussion. He said, uh, well, if you ask me, they all deserve to die. <laughs> Director David France aims to show how the ACT UP movement not only changed attitudes on homosexuality, but the course of science as well. It was a period where the gay community for the first time seized a, a place in kind of contemporary culture and part of the, you know, the, the, the dialogue of, of citizens. Um, and it gave us the, this new paradigm for patient activism. Uh, that has transformed really everything about science and mm. everything about the way drugs are investigated and and studied and um, and released and and uh, uh, and and that was all from a community that was uh, that was mo mostly just people who with HIV themselves. One of our slogans was "Knowledge equals power." Mm. Um, we were dealing with uh, a very complex medical crisis. We knew that if we were going to push the system uh, to do things as quickly as possible, that we had to become as expert mm. as the guys wearing the white lab coats. And it was successful to the extent that I remember seeing men dropping like flies between 87 and 92 and then that stopped and, and men survived and they learned to live with the virus. How about now? We're still seeing many epidemics that are popping back, like in young gay men uh, here in the UK and uh, in the US, uh, very, very distressingly for an American mm -hmm. AIDS activist. Uh, and so we have to, we have to, th this film has been a godsend in, in reminding people that uh, we haven't finished the job.